We'll uh, call our meeting to order. First item is invocation by Pastor Terrell Eldreth, First Southern Baptist Church. Stand together for prayer. Almost gracious Father, as we come to you this afternoon, we are mindful of, of the events that are taking place in our country, uh, events that are significant. Uh, Father, we think about the elections that come up next Tuesday. Reminded that even as, the, as Moses was in the Old Testament, that, that we need to select men who are trustworthy, who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them then to serve over us. It mattered 4,000 years ago who was selected. It matters today. And so, Father, we pray for our elections. We pray that you would be glorified by choices that we make. We pray that the people that we select to serve nationally and in our state and right here in Prescott Valley would be people that are trustworthy, who are willing to put the needs of others before themselves. And Father, we're going to trust that you will move and work in their lives. We thank you for the people that have served us and who will continue to serve us here in our community. Pray that you would continue to watch over them and direct their thoughts. Give them wisdom where it is necessary. And Father, we're going to just praise you in advance for all you're going to do. Father, we also remember that we are coming up to Veterans Day next week as well. So, Father, we pray that, that those who are the vets among us, that those who are, who are still serving uh, would be watched over. Father, we thank you for their service. We thank you for the sacrifices that they have made. We pray, Father, for their families. We pray for the families of, of two of our servicemen who, who gave their lives in Afghanistan just uh, this week. Father, we pray that you would touch their families, that you'd give them grace, that you'd give them peace. Father, we thank you now for what you're going to do, for decisions that are going to be made tonight, for direction that will be given to our city. Father, we pray that your wisdom would be, a, would be in abundance. We pray that we would find ourselves obedient uh, to who you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us. And now we commit this meeting to you. For we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Now the pledge will be led by... Uh... Oh, there's two young men. Okay, here they come. Pull the mic closer. Pull the mic closer. Ready? Begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Next item is the roll call, Diane. Mayor Skoog. Here, present. Vice Mayor Anderson. Here. Councilmember Grossman. I'm here. Councilmember Mallory. Here. Councilmember Marshall. Here. Councilmember Nye. Here. Cal Councilmember Whiting. Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, next item is scheduled uh, announcements and presentations. Chamber of Commerce. Marnie? Yeah, today. Oh, Patrick today. Okay. <laughs> It's good to see you, Patrick. Good to see you too, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, senior members of the council. Thank you again for having me back today. Um, today, I'm happy to introduce two uh, businesses to you this afternoon, or I guess this evening now. Uh, first, we're <coughs> going to start off with uh, Danny Fisher from Clayote Studio. She's going to come up and talk about her business for a few moments. You can have a trinket and a card if you like. You can pass it on if you don't want one. Hi there, I'm Danny Fisher. I have a business partner, Stephanie, hmm, Leon is her married name, and she's a little ill tonight, so she didn't make it. We just opened up a community gallery and studio on Robert and Spouse, 8198 East Spouse in the Green Building, Suite B. We're open, we're supposed to be open 45 hours a week, but 
We've been there a lot lately, creating our own art and getting our after-school programs ready. We provide an after-school clay program um, right now in Humboldt Elementary and also in Chino Valley. And although I have a teaching background, it's more about healing the kids. Um, it's more about relaxing. We're really good for dyslexics, autistic, special needs. And in our shop, we have wheel and wines for adults. So you can come in, have a little wine, listen to a little music, and make a pot on the wheel. So, Sign me up. Right? <laughs> we try to cover everybody. For instance, tonight we have open mic. And most of us aren't just artists, we're musicians and actors, and we just want to provide this for the community. I know how to make money off of it. I know how to make a living. We're not here to impress you. We're here to inspire your community. And our website is clayotestudios.com. And again, we're 8198 East Spouse. So stop by when you get a chance. And thanks for the opportunity. I used to live here a long time ago and provide the same services, and I'm happy to be back. It's good to see you. You want to give your phone number again and address? 610-823-3742. Is that it? You didn't give your address. but the Oh, 8198 East Spouse Suite B, ClayoteStudios.com. Good, thank you. It's so good to see you back again. Appreciate that. Thank you. I want to get your. Oh. Thanks, Danny. Uh, the next business we have for you today, um, we have Jasmine Evenson from Dutch Brothers Coffee. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jasmine Evenson. I'm the franchisee owner of the new Dutch Bros uh, Coffee in town in Prescott Valley. Uh, we're located off of 5963 State Route Drive, uh, uh, <coughs> State Route 69, sorry, um, Prescott Valley off Crossroads, um, right next to the Chipotle and Washington Mutual. Um, we are a drive through coffee shop. Uh, known for our fast friendly service so you can drive through or you can walk up uh, we have an outdoor patio with some outdoor seating so you're more than welcome to sit down and hang out with us for a little bit but we're mainly known for our drive through and our fast speed um, even though coffee is obviously in our name we have other things besides coffee so we have uh, smoothies teas we have a kids menu uh, we just holidays coming up so we just got eggnog and pumpkin in so we have a little bit of everything to serve everybody too so we're super excited to be here uh, we've been here for two months we opened in August and had uh, been having an amazing time so far uh, we had our first charity we're really big on give back so it's a uh, company-wide donation called Buck for Kids, uh, where we find a local charity that really focuses on kids. Uh, so we chose Prescott Valley's um, Boys and Girls Club, and we ended up raising 1875 for them all in one day. So we are super excited to give that back to them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So we're super excited to be part of your guys' community. Thank you for having us. Oh, we're excited to have you. Thank, thank you. you. So much. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Just to let you guys know again, too, we're open um, from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week, so you can't miss us. We'll be open on Thanksgiving till 2 p.m. Open for Black Friday again at 5 p.m. and uh, you can see us on Christmas Eve till 5 p.m. too. So thank you, guys. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Love the good work. All right. Thank you for that. And then the last couple of uh, announcements. We have our 13th annual Flying Turkey Drive coming up here pretty soon on November 21st. Um, we'll be at uh, the Prescott Valley Fries from 12 to 6. Um, and then the Prescott Chamber will also be at the Fries on uh, Fair Street and Willow Creek. We've got a goal of 2,500 turkeys this year, so come on out and buy yourself a turkey and donate one or two for uh, the families for the Yavapai Food Bank as well. Um, and then also we have the Valley of Lights opening up uh, Thanksgiving evening. So make sure you come out and see the beautiful lights that are put up and sponsored throughout the town. Uh, that again, again, we'll start uh, Thanksgiving evening uh, from 6 to 10 and continue through December 30th. So please come out, bring your families, and uh, it'll be a great time this year. Thank you again. Hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Good job, Patrick. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, next item is the... Uh Next time is Proclamation No Shave no November. Way.
I guess, uh, Mike, you're up. I, it's not on. Oh, there it is. Okay, I did forget about you. Sorry about that. First time in my life, Mike. Anyway, it's good to see you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Mike Paredes, Executive Director of Prescott Valley Economic Development Foundation. I uh, just wanted to come up here for <clears throat> you know, a couple minutes here just to give you an update what we've been working on over the last few months. Uh, we've been ever so busy at the office. Uh, I know I haven't seen you guys in a while. I spend a lot of time outside of the office uh, marketing and, and uh, promotion of uh, Prescott Valley as the place to do business. And as you, can, as you know, um, we need to get our name out and um, and sell our, our, our beautiful town for uh, industrial de development. So if I, if I may, take a couple minutes. Just to give you a little overview of uh, what types of companies or what type of interest that uh, we've been looking at over the last few months. What we work with is companies that have expressed interest in relocating or looking into a northern Arizona operation. Uh, viewing <clears throat> smaller communities, possible suppliers or third chain suppliers, third tier suppliers, excuse me, second, third tier suppliers of aerospace industries, uh, those industries that are clean, those, energy, those, uh, those uh, manufacturing plants that are viable and are conducive for business here in our, in our beautiful town. We do, I do market to those companies that are between five and 75 employees. That's our niche. This is what we this is our, for, our, our forte here in this town. Uh, they, for, for some reason, they really like the area on, um, I, I wish I can locate the five and 1,000 employee, but it's a little difficult. So, you know, bit by bit, we, we start relocating these companies from their respective states, and, um, and, and we're making great strides on that. Um, our focus regions are three. Southern California, or the entire state of California, the upper Midwest, I just came back from Cleveland, and also on the international spectrum. Uh, three major markets, especially in Southern California, I spent a lot of resources and time in the area. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are looking at exiting that state for obvious reasons of hard to do business. Um, a lot of it has to do with minimum wage, a lot has to do with taxes, a lot has to do with uh, environmental issues that uh, not only the state but also their local municipalities have, have um, pretty much uh, made it difficult for them to, do, uh, to succeed. And so that is where I'm there being nosy and knocking on their door and saying, have you ever thought of Arizona? Have you thought of Prescott Valley? And so I make the case for them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that is the ultimate goal to meet with them at their place and the ultimate goal is to bring them here into Prescott Valley and demonstrate our capacity and our uh, business friendly environment. I wanted to give you an idea, an overview of the types of leads that we work on. If you look on, on your screen, uh, these are the leads that we've had over the last few months. Um, I couldn't name the uh, company for uh, per se, but I give you a generalization of what type of industry it is and the type of square footage that they're looking at. The majority are looking for existing space, and so that's where we struggle a little bit. Um, as you can tell on your screen that a lot of uh, these are on the larger size, even for a larger metro area like Phoenix and Tucson, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there is no reason for me not to attempt to... Um, to discuss the possibility of actually building something here. <clears throat> the, oh, excuse me. Those, the, the leads I just showed you, these were uh, leads out of the Arizona Commerce Authority, one of our partners in, uh, at the state level. So these are leads coming from the state that are given to the rural areas. The next screen are PVDF, strictly, uh, strictly PVDF, leads that are coming out of uh, my contacts, that are coming out of our outreach efforts. And these are, as you can see, the, the square footage is smaller because it's more of the niche marketing that we do. Uh, these are more viable to ones that are, uh, <clears throat> that can be 
a little more viable for our community and, and build. The ones in red have decided to locate and are in construction. The ones in green are the ones that are, the ones in green are the ones that are at, at the foot of the door. And so I'm hoping to have a decision in the next 30, 45 days. So day by day, even on weekends, it doesn't matter when and where they want to meet, I, I meet with them. And um, the ultimate, my ultimate job is to create jobs, and that's why uh, you hired me, that's why PVDF board hired me, and that's what I do nonstop, and I am here for you. So uh, for you and the community, and I just wanted to give you an idea of the types of industries and the square footage requirements that they usually have. At this level, it's more conducive for them to build and so what I do is I involve PVDF membership and those in design and building and landowners and I develop teams for when these individuals come, uh, the ownership or the company executives do come to Prescott Valley, uh, every single minute is, 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 is timed and every single meeting is to the hour and making sure that they make a decision to locate into uh, Prescott Valley. Just to give you an idea of the types of uh, organizations statewide and, excuse me, on the state level, at the domestic level, and at the international level that we are involved with, um, our marketing material, Prescott Valley specific, are at these offices. Uh, exposure is very important. A lot of these companies know where Arizona is and they know where Phoenix and Tucson is, but uh, they might not know where Prescott Valley is. And it's my job to um, wave the flag and making sure that they uh, they know that we exist and that we are ready to do business. We've also, <clears throat> I recently uh, am working with a private consulting work group out of Quebec called Research Consultants International, uh, along with the lead generation from the state level, the generations coming out, the lead generation coming out of our office. Um, there's a third tier of working with private consultants and getting lead generations and B2B business and matchmaking and having me meet with, uh, having myself meet with these companies. By the time I meet with them, they have been vetted for months, meaning I don't meet with companies just because, for the sake of meeting. Um, they've been vetted, they've been worked with, they've, been, they've had numerous meetings prior from before I even um, shake hands with them. And so by the time I meet with them, they've narrowed their decision to a, an Arizona location or a Southwest location. There it's, then it's my job to uh, make the case for, for Prescott Valley. And this company's out of Quebec. Just to give you an idea on, uh, this is the, these are numbers out of uh, the... This, these are numbers that I, I got from Alexander right at the Yavapai uh, College, REDC, the Economic Development Office at REDC, just to give an idea of the, of the increase of uh, employment growth in the manufacturing sector in each of those, in each of those sectors over the past couple of years. Um, it's positive growth. It's, uh, it's a good step forward. I think we're coming out of the recession, and so I think we're doing an excellent job in trying to attract these, uh, these companies. Again, we're expanding our social media and uh, web, web page exposure. Again, um, my next step is uh, to translate our, our web page into a couple of different um, languages so we can hit an international market and uh, expose ourselves, expose uh, Prescott Valley to those potential markets outside of the U.S., non-English speaking um, countries. We just uh, finished our marketing brochure. I believe the last time I was here, I, um, I passed it out. Uh, those, those marketing magazines have been uh, dropped off personally by myself in Mexico City at the Arizona Commerce Authority's office for Latin America. I've also worked, uh, I personally dropped them off at the California offices in Los Angeles. And I believe we're gonna be taking them up to, or I'll send them, uh, mail them up to the San Jose office as well in Northern California. Uh, these are these are good partners. These are partners that we are able to use their offices in those respective cities, 
and uh, again, marketing campaigns to site selectors and industry associations and those consultants that we work with day in and day out. That way they have a quick uh, coffee table type of information, really quick, four or five pages. It's down to the point of who we are, what we do, what are the, what's our capacity, and why you want to locate here. So within a couple of minutes, they know exactly what, uh, what we're about. We're also, we just started a mailer campaign. Uh, we sent out a couple dozen of them, but uh, I decided to wait until after the elections because I know it's part of my mailers, a part of other a dozen other ones on a daily basis that we receive through the mail. I'm sure they just tear it up and they toss it. So I decided to wait until the L17 to start sending them out. And so uh, this is just another form of, of getting our word out. Is it successful? It might have at least uh, a little less uh, success rate, but it's still... A, a an element of marketing and so I, I I really want to get into that as well Again, they go into our partner organizations our consultants those industry associations in Southern California and the up in the upper Midwest as you know our we do PVDF does quarterly breakfast meetings um, this is our third one um, actually it's in uh, November 16th uh, here this is the first time we're gonna do it here breakfast is gonna be upstairs mm -hmm. Uh, so far, we have approximately, as of today, 170. So we are very excited. We're very lucky enough. Uh, I've been able to work with uh, <clears throat> Jamie Cassup from Google, from the Google Corporation, to come up and uh, speak to us for about an hour. He's an, he's an awesome in individual. I know some of you have already rsvp Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a, an excellent, excellent presentation. It's an eye-opener of how... Today's students work with technology and how, how it differs from different generations and how we as a community have to, uh, you know, tailor certain education programs to meet those labor requirements today, tomorrow, five, ten years from now. And so he does a really good job. Uh, he's well respected around the country. Uh, we're very lucky because uh, he's, always, he's always flying. He's presented at the White House, actually. So uh, we're very excited to have him here. And it's November 16th here. Uh, for those of you watching or for those of you who want to just uh, go ahead and contact our office, um, we have about 30 slots left. <laughs> so this, thing, this place might be sold out. It's 200, right, Larry? The capacity? <laughs> or else the fire chief will get mad at me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Whiting, the last time you asked me about um, mem membership, and um, I, I did a slide so I have a little understanding of how we are on current uh, public and private membership of where we're at. Uh, I just wanted to visually demonstrate to you and, and, and the members of the council where we're at currently privately at 538, 52 members on uh, the public. Obviously, it's, it's, the, it's uh, actually the town of Prescott Valley. Our goal, our ultimate goal is by March 1, to reach a private membership of 60,070 members. So it's my job, it's PBDF jobs to increase that private membership, and it's something we work on on a daily basis. Um, and so we wanna match up to the public entity as well. And um, I just wanted to demonstrate that because I remember the last time you had that question. Uh, PB cooperation, I just wanted to add this last slide. Uh, we're gonna be work currently working with um, um, Ben Hooper, the new, your, uh, Prescott Valley's new coordinator, and also Marnie Ohl, uh, director for the Chamber of uh, Commerce here locally. Uh, we're working on, uh, when I came back from I, the IEDC conference in Cleveland, one of the main things, I usually like to stay till the end because the last, uh, the last panel is about 20, 30 national and international site consultants. These are the eyes and ears of corporations. And it's two hours of just question and answer from economic developers like myself and one of the things that came out of it was having data-driven websites and what are the particulars that need to be on there. So there are, there is an IEDC standard, and so between the three of us, we are working on uh, setting uh, that standard and having whichever website they go through, either the chambers, myself, or yours at the town, they receive that same information in terms of data. Uh, it's very important. They, they gave me the list of the do's and the don'ts on websites, uh, they don't really care about bells and whistles. They don't care about much about the GDPs or what have you. They, they gave me specific examples of what they want on those websites. So 
we decided, um, th this came from Ben, Ben just wanted us to meet on a monthly basis and we, we all three of us agreed and so we just want to make a uniform type of, uh, <clears throat> a uniform and consistent uh, data for the outside uh, clients to, to view. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about what I'm trying to do is do a, a really nice uh, uh, drone video, marketing video for us. I really want to expose us to a bigger marketing market, a three, four minute video tops to demonstrate our capacity, our visual from up, 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 up and above in the sky uh, on our industrial development, our commercial development, our business activities, our quality of life, our, um, and, and, and say that Prescott Valley is the place to do business. If you, I have examples at the office if you want to stop by of what I'll be looking at. I'll be more than happy to show you. It is, it is awesome. It takes you through the streets of an industrial park. It'll take what I want to demonstrate is Glassford Hill on a busy day, excuse me, Glassford Hill Road on a busy day. I want to demonstrate that we do have a quality of life. Perhaps the drone coming up during a Northern Arizona Suns game where the parking lot is full. Uh, thinking through the park, housing development, retail development. Uh, and so this is the next step of what, this is something, uh, an asset for companies to say, I got three minutes to decide whether or not I pick up the phone and answer the phone call if Mike Paredes is on the, if it's on the call. So it's something that I want to, that I'm getting quotes on right now. And so I've extended, I've extended this conversation with Ben and uh, at the city, at the town, excuse me, and also with uh, Marnie at the chamber. And so we're going to, next time I come around, I'll, I'll give you an update where we're at. I know it's going to come down to money, but, you know, I'm going to try, try my best on that. If you've ever seen those videos, a real economic development production, it really demonstrates visually in three minutes what they can read in, you know, 10 pages worth of data. So that's what I want to demonstrate. Again, our goal is for me to get in front of uh, these individuals, corporate site selectors, uh, industry decision makers, company executives and ownerships, and consultants, and actually, you know, at the end of the day, locate a company here uh, bit by bit, but uh, we're making progress. I'm going to continue working with G-Prep, and I promise this is the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to continue working with G-Prep and the Yavapai uh, Economic Development Center and JTED. We meet on a consistent basis with Jeremy and with Alexandria Wright. Uh, niche marketing to those markets, especially in Southern California. Uh, <clears throat> and expand our exposure in the Phoenix market as well because what I've noticed is a lot of times these brokers that represent these large corporations outside of Arizona are down in Phoenix. And so I want to start uh, in, in meeting with them and taking them to lunch or a Starbucks or what have you and um, getting in, in, instead of them just marketing the Phoenix Valley, how about Prescott Valley? And so I don't mind taking that drive down consistently down to Phoenix and obviously assist our local industry. Any questions? Questions, anyone? Laura? <laughs> I, I don't have any true questions, but I have been following your journey closely, Mr. Paredes, and I want you to know that you're an outstanding standard bearer for this community. And I'm particularly taken with the fact that you're targeting businesses that have, as you stated, had already been vetted. Yes, sir. Because your time is precious, and I'm delighted to see how you're protecting that time when you're re representing us. And um, your last remarks, about the drone video, we've seen them down at the League of Town and Cities, and they're powerful. Yeah, they are. So kudos. Make it happen. Yeah, there's a couple of individuals that I've already started speaking with, and uh, they are very powerful, and they, strong, they send a strong message. Yes. At times, at certain trade shows, ma'am, um, members of the council, you only have a couple of minutes to make your case. And if a, if, if a video like that can make the case prior for me to meeting with them, then it, 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 it's, it's well worth the time. I promise I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an update next time I come. Rick? No, I think Michael has. Oh, Mike is first. Mike? Yeah, I just had one question. I noticed, and it's one of my areas of uh, interest, is health care. And you had skilled nursing on your list of uh, possibles. Uh, and I'm wondering, is that primarily focused along the Florentine, uh, you know, the 
the Florentine uh, Road where the hospital and other Florida. facilities are, or are they looking, does it matter for a skilled nursing facility where they're looking? Uh, the individuals, the two, com the, one, two, the two companies I've spoken with, one of them needed to be a certain, it couldn't be more than two miles away from the hospital. The other one, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Hmm. And these are major projects. This is not, um, you know, a four or five acre. We're talking, right. you know, a dozen acres or so and campus-like settings. These are high level, um, upper level RNs with specific additional training above and beyond their bachelor's in RN. Um, a lot of them, um, and, and, and I can say this publicly, it's, uh, a lot of it is more on the dementia side. So what you see is uh, uh, communities getting more uh, older and longer, and so a lot of these um, uh, conditions tend to exist. And so um, <clears throat> what are the projects, since it's, um, this individual has a lot of connections in D.C., wanted to wait after the election to see, yeah. <laughs> to see what happens. Like, uh, like other projects, but uh, yes, sir. It's one of them needed to be close by, so we were looking at a couple of uh, plots of land close by, uh, and the other one didn't, didn't need to be. So we, we can accommodate that, I guess you're oh, saying? Oh, yes, yes, uh -huh. Along the Florentine uh, yes, definitely. corridor there. And I'll tell you what, one of the projects is out of, uh, out of the Vegas area. This individual has so much uh, confidence in me. She has followed me from my two previous jobs, so she's been following me for almost seven, eight, nine years. It's saying I need to land this project, and she and she trusts me. She's a high executive, so I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that after the election um, in November in 2017, uh, I'm sitting down with her once again and uh, determining where, where where we go with this. And this is a major campus-like setting with different wings and. Uh, um, uh, a, a few dozen uh, are in health related jobs uh, high paying jobs because it's not just a cna it is a cna plus um training because they need to be trained in that dementia related uh, mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. yeah I, I work for the va and i know that uh, we've just uh, created a, a network of providers in the last uh, mm -hmm. three or four months and working with the rehab hospital here, I know they're looking uh, for partners as well, and that seems yeah. to be a great linkage to a nursing home or skilled nursing. Yeah, and yeah. we are and we are in communication with uh, both the hospital and the rehab, and determining where that need is. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a need, I believe, for the longer term care. Right. Yeah. I think we we as a community do a very good job for the short term. The um, I forgot the technical term that they use, but you know, the, um, the rehab from the hospital to their house, PV does a really good job at supplying that network of, uh, of, of programs that are existing, yeah. and there is, there's, there is enough bid. It's that longer term that is, that is needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mary? No. I'm... Marty? Uh, I always look forward to you coming before us to present what's coming up in, in the future. I mean, I'm always impressed by uh, the steps that you take. Uh, you stay up with technology, you t you're staying with the social media, uh, you're not doing it on your own, you're working in collaboration with other organizations and other uh, community leaders. And that's, that's uh, <coughs> impressive as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, and you're not sitting in the office, you're out there knocking on doors and yes, taking the trips and making connections. Plus, uh, based on, I mean, even the last thing that you just said regarding the nursing, uh, the fact that you're looking to the far future and you're, you know that something is coming and you're willing to be patient and wait for it, and when the time is right, it will happen, and we know that. So uh, keep up the great work. I look forward to your next visit. Thank you, Mr. Grossman. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mike, I think you're doing a great job. Just keep it up. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Good Thank evening. You. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next proclamation. Okay, go ahead. You deserve it. Okay, next is the uh, proclamation. No shave, no November. So we have a proclamation. I'll tell you what it's all about. <clears throat> yes, we do, Mayor. No shave, November 2016. 
Whereas America, among American men, prostate cancer is both the second most commonly diagnosed cancer and the second leading cause of cancer deaths, although prostate cancer incidence and mortality rates have declined over the last two decades, this year alone an estimated 239,000 men in the United States will be diagnosed with the illness and almost 30,000 men will die from this disease. And whereas one in eight have a chance of being diagnosed with prostate cancer and testicular cancer is the most common cancer in American males between the ages of 15 and 35. Despite these facts, 90% of prostate cancer is treatable if caught in the early stages. This makes awareness and early detection crucial. Being responsible for your health at every age and always getting your annual health check is a key part of making positive change for men's health. And whereas the No Shave November campaign encourages men to grow a beard for 30 days during the month of November, thereby becoming walking and talking billboards for men's health to raise awareness, encourage conversation about men's health issues, and raise funds for research and programs that combat prostate cancer and testicular cancer. And whereas educating the public and health care providers about the importance of healthy lifestyles and early detection of male health problems will result in, dis in reducing the rates of mortality from disease, now, therefore, I, Harvey C. Skoog, Mayor of the Town of Prescott Valley, Arizona, do hereby declare November 2016 as No Shave November and urge all men in the Town of Prescott Valley to show their support of men's health initiatives by growing a beard for 30 days. Thank you, Dan. Vice Mayor, any comment? Well, only that it is an important event. Uh, it is certainly worthwhile, and I know the chief agrees with me, and uh, we're doing our best this month, so we'll see how we can do. Thank you. You could use the magic grill on there. I could. Anyway, <laughs> chief, so great job. So if you see our uh, chief and our police officers look kind of scruffy, they're going to allow it this month. Normally they want the police officers to look sharp and, and, uh, and professional. But this is one month where I hope you can forgive him for that. Chief? Thank you, Mayor. This actually fits really nicely with our uh, efforts that we're making right now. And Jerry Ferguson is one of our CSOs, and we asked him to do a press release on our efforts, and he came up with Fuzz on Fuzz. And so uh, that campaign, we did a press release. Jerry did a press release. The Arizona chapter of COPS and the executive director got a hold of us, and uh, they, they said that their PIO had seen our press release and they were so excited that, the, the, that our charity is going to be the concerns of police survivors. And so uh, we are now running along with them a little bit of a state campaign. So we've got a lot of agencies across the state of Arizona, including Avapai County, who are all contributing to the cause. And in fact, we actually had a uh, citizen the other day came into the lobby and dropped off a check for us. So it's a great effort. It's a, it's a good cause. Thank you. And where should they drop off checks? I'd say my house. No, the uh, front lobby of the police department would be fine. Well, I asked my officers to donate $50 to the cause, and um, all the proceeds of this go to the Concerns of Police Survivors, which take care of benefits and other uh, resources for the families of fallen law enforcement officers. Just uh, keep it up, Chief. We've uh, thankfully, in my experience, we have never had a... Uh, officer die as a result of their duty. Sometimes there, there have been injuries, but thankfully no one's ever died. And we do appreciate this, Chief. And you take good care of those officers. We have a great department. We're very proud of them. Lieutenant Gregory to come up, because he's doing pretty good too right now. Oh, come on up, Gregory, and show us. <laughs> No, I, I just I don't get to have to get up in the morning to shave, so it's kind of nice. But he got fifty dollars out of me, so you're shaving somewhere, right? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> That's not an accident, is it? Huh? No. Okay, great. Well, you gentlemen are doing a super job. Thank you. Man. We're very proud of you. Thank you so much.
Thank, thank you, you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Good, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Who, if, if a citizen wants to drop off the check, who do they make it out to? COPS, cop, uh, Citizens of Police Survivors. I'm sorry, Concerns of Police Survivors. COPS. It's cops. Any other comments, anyone? Mayor, I'll make a comment. Yeah, Mike. I just want to <laughs> encourage everybody to go get tested for this because my wife's grand, or my wife's father just got diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer two weeks ago, and when they caught it, it's stage four because he didn't go until he started hurting. So just go out and get looked. It might not be comfortable or whatever, but just do it because it's it's better to catch it early. How often should people be checked? Yeah, yeah, Annually, at a physical, absolutely. Yep. Thank you so much, Chief, and good, good job. Council, any comments? Commissioner Laura. I just want to thank everybody that worked so hard on Halloween at the event center for all of those fabulous children and families that came through for safe trick and treating. I understand the number count was like twenty-seven hundred or something. I, 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 know, I happen to know because I was able to look right at the door. A lot of them didn't get counted because they scooted around behind the guy with the counter. But uh, thank you, Lions. Thank you, all the businesses that were there. The most important thing that I wanted to speak about this event was how appreciative the parents were over and over and over. They were thanking us, and they were having a good time, and they were all safe, and it, it was really a feel-good effort, and I was really glad that, again, this year, I, I went out and had so much fun giving away. Thank you, Laura. Any other comments? I think it, it worked out very nice having it at the event center. The kids were not running out on the street. They were in a safe place, so that worked out just great. Thank you, Marnie, for helping put that together. Okay, if there's no more comments, we'll go on to uh, items listed under consent agenda. These are considered to be routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. Unless discussion is desired, and, I, the item, and a specific item would be removed from the consent agenda to be discussed separately. This includes the approval of the August, October 21st, 1st, 2016 council and executive me session meetings and approving the purchase of a 2017 police vehicle in the amount of $36,581.46. Anyone want to pull an item or do you want to approve it as a whole? Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda by electronic vote. Okay. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. We've set the vote, Diane. Mayor Skoog, how do you wish to vote? Yes. Councilmember Anderson or Vice Mayor Anderson has voted yes. Councilmember Grossman, how do you wish to vote? Yes. Councilmember Mallory has voted yes. Councilmember Marshall, how do you wish to vote? Yes. And Councilmember Nye, how do you wish to vote? Yes. That's unanimous, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, we'll move on then to uh, new business for review, comment. And our possible action. First, we'll have a public hearing, zoning map change, ZMC 16-006, Navajo Commons Court. Richard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple weeks ago, we were in front of you talking to you about a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, regarding uh, changing 9.5 acres of uh, Navajo Commons to a um, designation in town's general plan to support multiple family. You approved that resolution, and, and now uh, you're receiving the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission relative to the zoning map change or entitlement that would permit uh, the project to go forward. Uh, as I discussed previously, and again illustrated on the screen, is the approximately nine and a half acres uh, off of uh, Commons Circle. Uh, these roads are uh, private roadways. Uh, principal access is made available to the project via Navajo Drive uh, and Bob Drive, as well as Florentine. Again, the roads in the project are uh, private. 
the applicant supplied a preliminary development plan, which is illustrated here showing 198 units on those uh, 9.5 acres. You can see also the parking fields that, is, that surround it, and there's a couple of unique, uh, unique aspects uh, to this proposal, including garages, uh, which would be made available uh, to uh, tenants of the facility uh, in, in the case that they intend to utilize that opportunity. Also, you can see a buffer area which would be um, used uh, as a drainage feature which uh, resides along Majesty, and uh, your briefing includes the discussion regarding the neighborhood meeting process uh, that tried to get people to come out and talk a little bit about their concerns or issues. Uh, no access is provided uh, via magistry, uh, Majesty to the site, rather the access is done uh, through the interior streets in Navajo Commons. Planning and Zoning Commission approved this preliminary development plan, and if you approve the zoning entitlement by adoption of the subsequent ordinance on your agenda, then the applicant will be able to bring forward a final development plan to finalize uh, development of this property. This is a typical building envelope, um, elevation showing the configuration of the outside of the buildings potentially, and those would be refined and, and presented to you as part of a final development plan. Uh, to date, we've received no opposition to uh, this proposal. As I stated previously, uh, there is a rather large pent-up demand for multiple family in the town of Prescott Valley. Uh, evidenced by the uh, preceding two large projects that you approved two weeks ago, and we fully expect to receive additional ones if there were not a market available for uh, this type of development, it would not be occurring. Um, attorney uh, Tom Cack is available to uh, represent Slade Development, uh, his client. I believe he's also a partner in the project. I know he's in the audience. Uh, he speaks eloquently, but he is an attorney, so I would uh, caution you in that respect. But beyond that, I would respond to any questions you may have, and I would assist Mr. Cack in responding to questions at your direction, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cack, you are up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and maybe thanks to Richard. If you have any questions, uh, we're in the process of uh, developing the property. Time has come. We believe the demand is here. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Okay, that means public too. Anyone from the public here to uh, comment or question? Council, Mayor Alora? I, I have a comment I want to make. I serve on the West Java by Guidance uh, Clinic Governing Board, and we just lost an AmeriCorps volunteer because he could not find a place to live uh, in, in his salary range. And that's exactly what these are. Had these been here and available, we would not have lost that AmeriCorps volunteer. So I applaud you. I'm grateful that we're bringing this level of need and fulfilling it. Well, thank you. We're, we're working on it hard. <laughs> we think it's going to be moderate priced, and people will be able to afford it. And the interior developer, the interior planning is being finished now. We have, still have a lot of work to do, but the units are going to be very nice as well. Uh, you can do quite a bit if you take the time to do it. So, if there's Look, any questions? Question, uh, Mike. I just had a question on your elevation, and that is, it says typical. So I'm assuming that's going to look like that. The uh, final design might look a little different, but there'll be three-story and pretty much look as they look here? Yes. The, okay. You're going to have some of the, when you look at that elevation and you see the top outs, those are all patios right. or, or everybody gets a private deck. And some of those decks are actually going to be smaller because they service a single two bedroom unit. But that's what, they'll generally look, look just like that. Okay, thank you. Other question, Mary? I just wanted to say that it's definitely a need, and uh, I know the community will be excited to know that there won't be such a long waiting list anymore for trying to find a place to rent at this time. So thank you very much. Thank you. 
I've heard the waiting list is many months, maybe years. How, how long is it now? Do you, do you have any idea? Richard, maybe you have an idea on that. Either one of you. Waiting list for an apartment or a facility? The uh, facilities across the street, they have a waiting list of over 150 individuals that are trying to get in. Uh, those are age-related. We have other uh, market rate uh, facilities that are full to capacity and have waiting lists. I'm aware of the uh, Glassford uh, terraces on Glassford Hill Road where uh, they have to take a unit uh, out of rotation to try to clean it up and paint it because uh, they could move somebody in the day after somebody moves out. So that's the kind of, of market that is very clear here, not only in Prescott Valley, but throughout the Quad City area. Good. Any other questions, comments? Anybody from the public comment? If not, anything else, Tom? No. no. I appreciate your coming out. And Thank by you. the way, the police department does suggest you uh, let it grow for the month of uh, November. <laughs> if I did, it would just look like fuzz. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, I sure appreciate that. But if, if there's no other comments, then I would declare the public hearing closed, and we move on to B, consideration of approving the reading of Z ordinance number 822 by title only on two separate occasions, then place the same on final passage, ZMC 16006, Navajo Commons Apartments. If I may, Mr. Mayor, this follows up uh, your uh, public hearing, but would draw your attention to the stipulation in the proposed ordinance, which regards uh, the charging of a 2% uh, surcharge on rents. That's been a consistent uh, policy that we've applied on larger projects throughout uh, the town of Prescott Valley. And part of the thought process is we're taking commercial properties out of production, so to speak, uh, from which, uh, if they were to develop, we would receive that uh, excise tax. And this is an, an, an uh, attempt to try to replace some of that, that excise tax for the long haul. And that's included as one of the stipulations in uh, the ordinance before you. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're going to uh, B then. Is there uh, any questions, comments, motions, demotions, commotions, promotions? Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to make a motion to read ordinance number 822 by title only on two separate occasions and place the same on the final passage, ZMC 16-006, Navajo Commons Apartments. And I'll second that. We have the motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? Vice Mayor Anderson, how do you wish to vote? Yes. Councilmember Grossman? Yes. Councilmember Marshall? No. Okay, Mayor, we have six yes votes and one no. Okay, thank you. That means it passes. Okay, we'll move on to uh, C, consideration of approving the purchase of a Ramada from Extra Play Incorporated, a landscape structure company, via TCPN certified proposal number R. 5202-AZ-12053 in the amount of 35,243.96. Brian? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm and sorry, I gotta do one thing before I go there. I, I'm gonna step ahead of myself. We gotta read uh, that ordinance by. <laughs> Wait, one. Give me one second, sorry about that. No problem. problem. Ordinance number 822. An ordinance of the mayor and the common council of the town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, amending the town's zoning map to change the zoning classification of approximately nine and one half acre parcel located north of Florentine Road between the common circle and Met Majesty Drive from C2 Pad Commercial General Sales and Services Planned Area Development to, to R2 pad residential multiple dwelling units planned area development zoning and providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval according to law thank you dan okay now we're going to brian's uh, exercise uh, extra cycle uh, unit yes uh tonight for your consideration is uh an item of a ramada for the Bob Edwards Park project that was included in our fiscal year, 2016-17 fiscal year. 
Uh, this particular Ramada keeps in mind of our infrastructure standards uh, and a design created by classic recreation systems. Uh, this quote was received by Exerplay, their authorized dealer within the state of Arizona, and is a cooperative purchase via TCPN. Uh, if you have any questions in regards to that, I'd be happy to answer them. If approved, uh, staff will begin the process of a 8 to 12 week construction schedule with that vendor. Okay, questions, anyone, comments? No. Oh, that's good. I think it's fairly clear and it's a good, good place to put it. No one else got any questions, comments, motions? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the Ramada from Everplay Incorporated Landscape Structure Company via the TCPN certified proposal R5202-AZ12053 in amount of 35000 Two forty-three and ninety-six cents. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? Mayor Skoog. Yes. Vice Mayor Anderson voted yes. Councilmember Grossman. Yes. Councilmember Mallory also voted yes. Councilmember Marshall. No. Councilmember Laura Lee Nye and Councilmember Whiting both voted yes as well. That is six yes and one no, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, we move on into a consideration of approving an agreement with Yavapai Regional Medical Center for no locks zone uh, 11116 added to agenda. That's a new item, Chief. Good evening, Mayor and members of council. This is a pretty good pronunciation. I have a hard time with it, too. So, Throughout Yavapai County, we can see, continue to see an increase in the number of overdo overdose deaths attributable to heroin. This increases because of many variables, including the reduction in the availability of prescription medications, the decreased cost in heroin, and the introduction of lab-manufactured opiates that people use to cut the heroin to get more out of it. And some of the manufactured opiates, uh, one in particular, fentanyl, is thousands of times stronger than the average opiate. The equivalent of a couple grains of salt a fentanyl can kill a human being if inhaled or exposed to the naked skin. It's a, it's a very dangerous drug. Part of the problem is that when our officers go out to scenes and they come across a drug, they, they are required to uh, street test or field test the substance. This increases the potential for exposure of fentanyl or other substances, not only to our officers but other people who are on the scene. The proposal before you tonight will allow us to protect our personnel and members of the community by forming a relationship with the Yavapai Regional Medical Center so that we can purchase naloxone to be carried by our personnel. Naloxone is a prescribed drug that temporarily reverses the effects of opiates. It basically works, it um, attaches to the opiates and renders them benign. In practice, if one of our citizens or one of our, my personnel is exposed to opiates and they begin to exhibit distress or other physical symptoms, we would then administer the naloxone to prevent the effects of the opiate and then summon medical assistance. In essence, we will potentially save the lives of citizens who might have otherwise been lost to an overdose. And we will protect our own personnel from accidental exposure to opiates like fentanyl. And when I'm talking about the, the members of the community or other people in the, in the town. I don't want people to get the idea that we're going to go around just uh, reviving you if you're a heroin addict and you're overdosing. But what we see a lot of times is that uh, people who are on drugs aren't the most responsible people. So there may be small children in the home or something like that. And they may be the ones who are being exposed to fentanyl. And so we would be trying to administer this so that, to save them. As a note, uh, House Bill 2489 amended several Arizona revised statutes and in part reads, peace officers who administer naloxone or any other opiate antagonist pursuant to this section are immune from civil, professional, and criminal liability for any decision made or action taken. And I will also tell you that Prescott Valley leads the state in this area and I, I'm pretty sure that we are the very first agency that is being um, that will be using this under the direction of Southwest Risk. In fact, we've spent a lot of time with Southwest Risk um, working together to bring this to you. 
I, with that, I'll answer any questions that I may. Questions, Marty? Uh, just quickly, I just want to be sure. Uh, if a police officer is on the scene and there is someone who's been exposed to fentanyl, uh, will it be at the discretion of the police officer to administer it, or will they be in radio contact with medical personnel to authorize it? No, part of the uh, revised statutes and the House Bill 2489 re requires uh, specific training in this area, so our officers will not be issued or able to use it until they complete that training. Okay, so, so they're going to be certified as to being able to recognize and administer. Correct. It would be I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Yes. I'm glad you asked that, Marty. Good question. Any other questions? Mike? Go ahead. Go ahead. Or Steve, I'm sorry. Go Steve. Oh, okay. Steve, go ahead. Uh, first, I wanted to point out that INSYS, the company that makes fentanyl, is one of the companies um, funding the anti-Prop uh, 205. So take that however you want. Um, but two, uh, with the training, are the police getting the, uh, the training on the contraindications for, for Narcan? On the contraindications? The thing is, um, so let's say it is administered to somebody who has not ingested opiates or is, or is displaying those signs. It has no effect on them at all. Right. I mean, I, I was looking on my phone just now, and it said that high blood pressure is a, a contraindication. I guess it would probably lower your blood pressure. Um, is, is that something that? I would imagine that would be covered in the training, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, Mike. Yeah, I was just curious. The total cost, we're, we're going to purchase, I guess, the delivery system, I guess you could call Correct. it. Correct. What is the cost of the um, drug that we'll receive or get from the hospital? It's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Uh, beautiful thing. <laughs> thank you, uh, Council Member Whiting. We have, uh, we're working on a grant with uh, the medical center. The only thing that we're going to have to pay for is the actual inhaler. This is d um, delivered as a, um, a nasal inhaler type of, uh, like a spray. And so that spray mechanism is the only thing that we're going to be having to pay for. And the cost of it, I, I don't know exactly what that cost is, but it's nominal. Right. The, the drug is going to be provided by the hospital mm -hmm. on a grant. So this is something new to us. We've never used that kind of a, uh, what would you call it? Uh, These are unprecedented no. times, sir. Okay. Because I've seen it used, you know, I think they profile that in different uh, uh, applications on TV in terms of reality shows or actual, I think, uh, use of those. And one of the reasons it's becoming more prevalent here is it's been uh, in the hands of medical professionals like EMTs, paramedics, and so forth for a long time. But in rural areas like Arizona and even Prescott Valley, it could be a, a long time for a medical personnel to arrive. So usually even when we have medical calls in Prescott Valley or Prescott, it's the police who show up first. Mm -hmm. And so in those cases... If there is, like I said, small children or other people who have been exposed to this and are exhibiting the signs, and based on the training of the officer, they can they can um, administer the naloxone, and hopefully uh, wait then for the other advanced medical help to get there. But in addition to that, if our officers and I could use uh, you know example like the county, if they're uh, doing a search warrant up in Ash Fork, and their officers get exposed to that uh, substance, they need to be administered that aid immediately. Otherwise, it can result in death. Are there other agencies here that are using it? Not yet, None, but they all right. want to know how we're doing it. Right. And then how, who will be carrying those? How, how, is that going to be done by unit or by? Every uh, officer. Every officer. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I'm fine. I think I've heard just about every question that I had okay. already asked. So. Rick? No. Anyone no. else? Hey, it looks like a dynamic product. Cutting edge, your um, mayor. And, uh, it looks like something we, we, we need. Yeah, and Prescott Valley, again, is uh, the pioneer in this area. Hmm. Laura, I, I just wanted to say that other communities in other states have been doing this for a while. We're, we're not new to this at all. We're, we're coming in at a time where our over, heroin overdoses are higher than they have ever been. And so I'm grateful that we have a product that's proven itself and that we are going to be saving lives. And I'm, I'm comforted by that. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, Anyone? motions? 
Okay, sure. Motion to approve the contract with Davipi Regional Medical Center for prescribed uh, nalicone uh, by electronic and voice vote. And I'll second, second that. Second, okay, with a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? Mayor Skook? Yes. Councilmember Grossman? Yes. Councilmember Mallory? Yes. Councilmember Marshall? Yes. Councilmember Nye? Yes. And Vice Mayor Anderson has voted yes, and so has Councilmember Whiting. That's a. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We agree with you. Thank you so much. Okay, we move on to number D, or C. E, I'm sorry. Consideration of accepting Council Member Steve Marshall's resignation. I haven't seen a resi letter of resignation, Steve. Uh, they actually got one for you, uh, and they can give some to the people in the audience. But I think they're going to give you one. Okay. Well, thank you. So. Okay. What I'm reading in this letter is that you, uh, about, the, about the council. Your corrupt behavior is the main reason I'm re resigning. I'm hoping that with my resignation, people will wake up and get more involved. The longer you are allowed to sink this town into debt and raise taxes without second thought, the harder it will be for the citizens to dig this town out of the hole we've created. So, anyone care to comment on that? Just. Yes, come on up. We will allow, allow it, yes. Uh -huh. But you have to use a microphone. Sure, come on up and speak. Uh -huh. Thank you, my name is Martha Duncan. Um, I didn't read the letter completely, but um, I, would just like to thank you for your service, Mr. Marshall, to the town um, for your strength and your endurance. Um, we respect your integrity and your willingness to be a representative for the people who elected you. And I think that's important. We don't see it in Washington, D.C. We don't see it a lot of places. It's not about the town. It's about the people that you represent. I'm grateful for the things that you have said and done for us. I'm grateful for your um, consultation with the Attorney General. We still have an ongoing uh, case regarding the illegal annexation of the Prescott Country Club. Um, and so it's just apparent to us that I know it's hard for you. I wish you the best in your future for your family and all your endeavors and may sometime um, uh, others will stand the same way you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Any other? Okay. Any other comment? By the way, I do uh, have to limit it to five minutes. So. I just want to say thank you for um, Stephen Marshall for you have to being. Have introduce yourself first. Oh, please. sorry. I'm Jessica O'Connor. Is any is there anybody on the council who doesn't know who I am? We have to get it over, over there on the speaker. <laughs> okay. The reason is that um, I'm the chairperson of a committee who has um, put in a lot of groundwork this year to get an initiative on the ballot, as most of you hopefully are aware. And um, all of these council members are elected to represent the people, but not a single council person, except for Stephen, cared to contact me find out what we were doing, why we were doing it, what the people's responses. I was out talking to hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people. I mean, between our two efforts, we had at least, I mean, there was like 3,000 signatures. But nobody even bothered to ask 
about what we were doing or why we were doing. And in fact, not only that, the police chief spoke out against it, which of course was extremely disappointing for me. You know, I was trying to keep it pretty, it's, it's not about you guys. Our initiative has nothing to do with you. It has to do with getting the people in Prescott Valley to be a little bit more involved in their government. And it has to do with checks on government too. You know, it has to do with, if you wanna raise taxes, let's think about it, let's ask the people, let's, let's do a thorough investigation of it. It's not about any individual person, it had nothing to do with that and never did. So it was disappointing, it's disappointing to me. But Stephen Marshall actually contacted me and said, hey, I'll sign this initiative, you know, if you come by my house, I don't even think I ever got over there. <laughs> but the thing is, um, I actually watched a couple council meetings where he, sat up there by himself and brought up some illegal activity that was done by one of your top employees and not a word was spoken by any of you. Even Laura Lee Nye, who I'm telling you, like, you know, she's got something to say about everything, right? And the thing is, nothing. You know, and it was really, really disappointing. I think Michael Whiting said something one time, but I wanted to hear your opinions on it. I wanted to know what you thought. Whether, I mean, even if you supported him, I wanted to hear why. And if you didn't support him, I wanted to hear why. You know, I mean, you're supposed to be 30, representing 30 seconds, us. By the way. And uh, so anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm sorry that they chased you out of town. But um, <laughs> congratulations on your new job. And I hope that you'll have fun in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. See you guys. Anyone else care to comment? Come on up. Mrs. Ambergia, welcome. My name is Lisa Ambergia, and I just want to thank Stephen. Stephen did everything he promised that he would do during the, the election. The first time I met Stephen, we sat down in Denny's, and I kind of told Stephen what he would be up against. And I don't think that he really believed that the corruption ran as deep as it does. Uh, but I do know one thing for sure, Stephen, with your personality, as you move on in life, you'll be running for government office again. And I think so, Stephen, <laughs> and I wish you luck if you do, and I wish you luck if you don't. And you were an asset to the town. Unfortunately, too many people didn't realize it. And I wonder why more people didn't realize that all of you people that were elected in the same time, Stephen, said you weren't going to raise taxes or enforce new taxes. Now, when that tax money comes in, I hope every one of you that broke your promise to the people enjoy how it's spent because there's families that have to have backpacks of food sent home to feed their kids. That small little bit of money that Marty took the time to break down as it being just so little every month could have been a couple of fresh oranges for a kid or maybe a little bit of ground beef to stretch their money for the rest of the month. But in your greed, really, you wanted to raise taxes. There's more tax money coming into this town now than ever before with all the new businesses and the new businesses coming. And I'm glad for the short time we had Stephen. I want to thank him. And I just wish there were more like you, Stephen. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> to pull it down, I'm short. So. My name is Shelia Stearns, and I, would, and I read your letter just now over um, the phone, and I just want to tell you that I'm in agreement with most of what you said in that letter, and I really appreciate your effort. I, I know from personal experience, I've been involved in many political things throughout my life and in, other, in another state, and I know that it's very difficult to um, appear or seem to be going against... Uh, the opinions of others that are on the council. And, um, but, but stick to it. Don't give up. We need young people. I mean, to me, you're young. <laughs> we need young people like you who are willing to stand up and to become knowledgeable, especially about the Constitution 
that we have supposedly taken oath to uphold, um, many people do not know about the Constitution. They do not read it. They haven't been been educated, especially the young people and many people. And, and, and people are afraid to say th to, to stand up and say something. They're they feel uh, uh, not competent, or they're afraid to speak. And so, so that is the reason why you're seeing what you're seeing. Many people want to know. They just don't know where to go. As we see what's happening in our national government, we see it in our state government, and now we see it in our local government, the same trends. And I just hope that the people in Prescott Valley, in our own community, wake up wake up and become knowledgeable, become educated about what are correct principles. Thank you. Do not give up, and I hope you continue. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so Appreciate much. it. I'm in Paul. My name is Paul T. Morris. I've had the least interaction with uh, Stephen Marshall of everybody on the council. But I can tell you and the cameras and all you folks, Stephen Marshall served his country with integrity. Stephen Marshall served his country with honor. Stephen Marshall served this town with integrity. And Stephen Marshall served this town with honor. We're going to miss you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Any other comments? Yeah. Debbie, welcome. Mayor, town council, city employees, thank you, Stephen. You and I have had some interaction. I wrote you a one-page letter, and you responded to me quickly. I'm emotionally not a great speaker here, but I will tell you that there's some very strong words here, and we spoke about that earlier in a letter I wrote to you. The anger here is not acceptable for me. We have a fine, fine, fine city and council. They work hard. They're committed. I do a lot of campaign work, and I've learned in campaign, campaigning that you have to stick with it. Highs and lows, the bad and the good. And what I'm seeing today with young people, they're not sticking with it. And that concerns me a great deal, that they're not asking the big questions and sticking with it. So whatever you do, I hope that you really do stick with it, as I stated in my letter to you. And this is anger, and I'm really sorry for that, because that's not really where we need to go. That doesn't solve anything. So I don't know if it's just the city or not, but I understand you're moving on. So some of this doesn't ring true to me. So I think there's some other issues out there going on. What doesn't ring true? Obviously, you're moving for reasons that I'm not really sure of. They're in the, the resignation letter. Thank you. I'll read further. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Fine, fine city. Great town to be from and be in. Appreciate it. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Anyone else got a comment? Also, any comments? Laura? I do. I want to sincerely thank you, Stephen, for your service to our company our country, and I have a disabled Marine grandson, and I know the price he pays, and I watch you pay some of it. And what I wish for you is success in your new job. I heard maybe that it's with drones, and I know you had a heart and a love for that, and I want you to enjoy it, and I want you to be really successful. And I very much want you and your wife to be happy. Wherever your journey takes you, I want you to find peace, and I want you to be happy. Rick. Before I forget, here's my dog-eared constitution that's with me always. Thank you, Laura. Any other comments, questions? Mary? Oh, I just, again, want to thank you. I've always thanked you for your service to the country. As you know, I have two sons, too. And uh, without people like you to serve, we wouldn't have the freedoms that we've all had tonight to say what we feel 
and have the difference of opinion and to walk out of here safely. And you know what? That's what we have in this great country, that freedom that you have fought for. And I will always be grateful for that. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, we appreciate your, your service, both uh, for our country and for the council. And, you know, one thing I appreciate is your youth. I think uh, one thing I always look forward to is uh, comparing your age with those who come before us. And obviously you weren't even born, I think, before our town was incorporated as a, a town. So a lot has happened since 1978, and I agree. I think our, our town is probably a, a, a good indication of what a, an all-American town is about. And we all have our own opinions, and it's unfortunate that we use this form in a negative way when we really want to send off Stephen in a positive way and hope he has uh, all the luck uh, uh, with him when, in his new job in Texas. So good luck. Larry, did you have a comment? Bobby? Yeah, my, my I talk? <laughs> you didn't get to me yet. Okay, Marty. Yeah, uh, I just want to wish Stephen well. Uh, you know, thank you for your service to the country. When the both of us started out three years ago on the council, you and I got to spend some time together in those rides down to Phoenix and some of the other training. So we got to share some comments. And, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's obvious that we don't agree on everything. But, you know, you, you gave your service and you, uh, you did your best. And uh, I, I think that's commendable, you know, the fact that you uh, stuck to your opinions and... Uh, I wish you well in, in your future, and uh, you hopefully find the peace and contentment in other communities that you move to. Any other comments? I'm going to step down there. Steve, you want to join me down at the lectern? Sure. Steve, we uh, do want to pre present you a certificate of appreciation presented by the Town of Prescott Valley to Stephen Marshall in appreciation of dedicated service to the Town of Prescott Valley as a council member, June 2013, November 2016. Steve, thank you for your help. Larry, you got any comments? Well, there, uh, Steve and I have worked with over 30 uh, council people and mayors over the last 27 years. And I, I want you to know it's been a pleasure. I uh, certainly appreciate your perspective on um, on things, and I wish you well in, in your new ventures. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed, for example, when you were up and we were building that trail, and you're up there flying the drone around and seeing the the pure joy that that you were expressing when you were flying that thing around and having a ball. So anyway, I wish you well, you and your family. Stephen, any comments? <clears throat> well, I guess if you read my resignation letter, you could kind of come to the conclusion that I'm full of hate, but really I'm not. I I've had a lot of good times here, but I, I couldn't stand it anymore. It was like every Thursday I dreaded coming to this place because I was never listened to. I was always pushed off because I was a younger guy. They said when they wanted to re uh, increase the taxes that... Uh, we had to do it for police and roads, but it turns out if you go and ask Bill Copey now, we're on track to be, uh, without raising the taxes a penny, $2.4 million in tax revenue above last year. So we could have done it without raising the taxes, but nobody wanted to take the time and listen. And I also, I want to apologize to the people of uh, Prescott Country Club, because I didn't look hard enough. Uh, I do believe that that was illegal, and I am sorry. So, but thank you. We wish you the best, and thank you so much for your service. Keep up the good work. Mayor, we do have one more thing to take care of. I'll make a motion to accept Council Member Stephen Marshall's resignation. Can I second that? 
You can. I certainly can. I guess you can, that. yes. It hasn't, hasn't been accepted yet so, uh, or approved of <laughs> yet. So, yes, the answer is yes. Diane, there's been a uh, motion and a second to accept the vote. Uh, I, didn't I didn't actually catch who voted, the, made the second motion. Steve did. You seriously did? Yeah. I seconded it. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I double checked on that. Okay, everybody may start voting. That's it. Mine isn't showing up on uh -huh. there. Uh-huh. Okay. Mayor Skoog? Vote yes. Vice Mayor Anderson? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Mallory voted yes. Council Member Nye? Yes. Council Member Marshall, do I need to ask? Absolutely yes. Okay. Was that unanimous, Diane? It is, Mayor. Thank you so much, Steve. We want to wish you the best, and thank you for your service. Okay, uh, next we have uh, unscheduled comments from the public. Those wishing to address the council need not to address, request per, uh, permission in advance. Any such remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole, not to any member thereof. Such remarks shall be limited to five minutes on this, unless additional time is granted by the mayor. At the conclusion of the unscheduled comments, individual members of the council may respond to the item addressed at the, at the discretion of the mayor, or they may ask the town manager to review the matter, or ask that the council be placed on future agenda. <coughs> Anyone care to make a uh, unscheduled comment? Chaplain, no comments? If there's no comments, then we have one more item that everyone hates, and that's a motion to adjourn. Anybody care I'll make a motion to adjourn, Mayor. Okay, with a motion, is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Mayor. We have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? Yes, Mayor. I'm going to vote yes on that. Mayor Skoog votes yes. Vice Mayor Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Grossman? Yes. Councilmember Mallory voted yes. I'm assuming that Councilmember Marshall would vote yes. He's no longer. Councilmember um, Nye? Yes. And Councilmember Whiting voted yes. That's unanimous, Mayor. That is it. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate your comments.